police officer named Dale is grunting while sitting in the driver's seat of his patrol car. This is because a spirited teenager named Erica was giving him a good time. After handing her 18 bucks, Dale asks her to leave. However, Erica takes his car key and runs to her friends Claudine and Kala, who turns out to be filming their transaction. Dale warns them that the video won't hold up in court, but Erica says that they just want his money. And so, the poor police officer withdraws the remaining $400 in his account and gives it to the girls before leaving. After a quick trip to the mall to go shopping and playing in the arcade, Erica goes home and puts the money she earned in her piggy bank. She then updates her Excel sheet where it shows the men that she has given her service, in the $15,000 target savings which turns out to be a bail fund to get her father out of prison. Her mother Lori talks about her new boyfriend Bob, who is a good and very supportive person, but Erica clearly doesn't like the guy, saying that her dad is way cooler than him. Lori found her sketch pad which contains different drawings of male privates, and she asks her daughter if she needs another talk with the therapist, to which Erica declines, saying that the therapist was a child predator. Later that day, the girls meet at the bowling alley where they see the hot old guy named Will, and Erica is clearly attracted to him even if her friends tell her that he is old enough to be her father. Claudine invites them to her house, but Erica declines because they will fetch Bob's son and her future brother-in-law from rehab. She says that he will be living in their house, and her friends hopes that he is a hot and badass guy. Outside the rehab, Lori and Erica wait in the car while Bob picks up his son. A rock star dude comes out and Erica got excited, saying that he is hot. However, her mom says that he is not the guy. Moments later, an overweight boy named Luke comes out, and much to Erica's disappointment, Lori says that he is her future brother-in-law. Dinner that night is awkward, with Lori and Bob being overly affectionate, Erica questioning her luck, and Luke getting too embarrassed by his dad talking about the foods that are prohibited to him. He starts to have a panic attack, and when he runs out, Lori bribes Erica to go after him. Erica tries to talk to Luke on the sidewalk, but he shuts her out. Desperate, Erica offers him an indecent proposal to make him relax, but he rejects it, saying he doesn't want to get it from his future stepsister. Erica takes it in stride and leaves. The next day at school, Erica tells her friends about her future stepbrother, calling him fat and loser. Moments later, a schoolmate intentionally trips her, then calls her names. Erica answers back, but when the schoolmate started talking about her father in prison, Erica punches her and pins her to the ground. During a Sunday brunch by the pool, Lori asks Erica to be nice to Luke and deliver his food. Instead of forcing him to eat the healthy food made by his father, Erica invites her stepbrother out for some real food. They head to the bowling alley where Luke finally gets to eat junk food again, and he tells his stepsister about how food helps him with his anxiety attacks. Erica apologizes for being rude and the two have a fun talk, until Luke sees Will, triggering another panic attack. That night, Erica hears noises and finds Luke attempting to harm himself. However, as her stepbrother jumps, the rope breaks, making him fall hard. He's rushed to the hospital, and while waiting, Bob reveals that Luke saw his former teacher who allegedly molested him years ago. Knowing that it is Will whom he is talking about, Erica starts stalking the hot old guy, eventually roping Claudine and Kala into a plan to target him. She claims that they can earn a lot because Will is clearly rich, and aside from that, she can also exact revenge for her stepbrother. However, Claudine doubts if Will is going to hit on Erica since Luke was his type. That evening, Luke tells his stepsister that he wants to go back to rehab, and Erica says that if it has something to do with Will, she can help him serve his revenge. Luke is reluctant to accept her offer, but he eventually agrees. Erica's mission begins by befriending Will at a grocery store while the three wait nearby. Despite initial resistance, Will eventually succumbs to Erica's charms, even though he knows she's underage. Later that night, Erica scrolls through Will's photos, and Luke's jealousy surfaces as he comments that she seems obsessing over the hot old guy's pictures. Erica claims that she is just looking for clues, and she teases her stepbrother for getting jealous. When her favorite song plays, Erica invites Luke to dance with her. The stepbrother is reluctant at first, but he eventually gives in, and the two dance over the romantic song. The next evening, Erica flirts with Will at the bowling alley while her friends wait outside to film them. The two later come out and rush inside the car, but the crew is finding it hard to film anything as it is raining heavily. Moments later, Will and Erica can no longer contain themselves and start making out, and her friends are surprised because Erica never does that to their targets. When Erica tries to eat the corn cob, Will stops her, making the young girl feel insulted and leave. The next day, Erica deflects questions about her actions last night, with Luke accusing her of being in love with Will. To redeem herself, Erica suggests breaking into Will's house and roofing him so that they can take some pictures and extort money from the guy. That night, the girls spike a beer and Erica takes it to Will's house as an apology. 
Will is hesitant to let her in, but when the young girl promises to drink just one beer, he agrees. While drinking, Erica learns about Will's ex-wife and how his life got ruined because of a false accusation that he molested a middle school student. He claims that the kid who accused him is a pathological liar and because of him, he lost everything, including his wife and job. Realizing that they got everything wrong, Erica snatches Will's beer before he can take another sip and throws it on the wall. However, it is already too late as the drug is already starting to kick in, and while the young girl explains what they did, Will grabs her. Luke thought that the guy was hurting his stepsister, so he runs inside and knocks the guy out. They continue with their plan nevertheless, and the girls take incriminating pictures with Will who is unconscious. When they were about to leave, Luke got worried because Will seemed to have overdosed. Erica tells him that he will be fine and reminds Luke that the guy molested him so he shouldn't worry about him. As they leave, Erica finds out that her friend's spray painted Will's garage out of boredom. The next morning, the police, headed by Dale, come over to Erica's house to question them about a vandalism reported by Will's neighbors. The neighbors claim that they see young kids that fit the description of Luke and his stepsister. However, Erica denies their involvement, and since they got no proof yet, the officers just leave. Lori confronts her daughter about it, but Erica continues to lie about it until they start cursing each other, making Bob join in on their quarrel. Later that day, Erica and Luke go to check on Will, and they find him still sitting in the same position as last night, lifeless. It turns out that he got accidentally stabbed by a metal miniature when Luke knocked him out. Realizing the gravity of their actions, Luke convinces his stepsister to ride Will's car so they can flee to Mexico. Erica is hesitant, but Luke tells her that they have got no other choice because the cops will soon figure out what happened. Back at their house, their parents find a note from Luke, claiming that he kidnapped his stepsister, and they are heading to Mexico. While on the run, Erica tries to convince herself that Will deserves what happened to him. But then, Luke confesses that the guy did not actually touch him. Erica got mad because her stepbrother lied, and a man got killed because of it. However, Luke explains that it was not him who Will molested, but a 12-year-old girl from his school. She was so scared and did not want to tell anyone, so Luke took the disgrace and claimed that he was the one molested by Will. Impressed by his heroism, Erica reconciles with her stepbrother, and she comes with him as they take a rest at a nearby motel. The next day, Luke surprises his stepsister by bringing her to the prison where her father is being held, but Erica says that she does not have the money to bail him out. Luke shows her the money that he took from his dad, and this makes her very happy. However, when she is about to pay the bail, Erica finds out that he was already released days ago without informing her. This leaves the poor girl brokenhearted after all she did just to save money for his bail. While driving, Erica asks her stepbrother that they just head home, claiming that they can just make up a story to explain what they did. Luke agrees, but moments later, they see a police car seemingly chasing them. While speeding up, Luke confesses his love for Erica, and in response, she kisses him. They stop by a nearby bush to continue their business, and after it, Erica confesses that it was actually her first time. While savoring the moment, the police arrives and arrest them. A month later, Erica visits her stepbrother in prison, and Luke tells her that he is having a good case because the girls that were molested already came forward. Erica calls him a hero and thanks Luke for saving her life. They continue flirting with each other, and moments later, Erica shows her surprise, which is a sketch of his private, and she promises that it will be the last one she'll draw. Did you like our movie recap? Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. To be updated for new movie recaps, hit the notification bell.